Hello and welcome to today's video. This time we're going to be going through my recent vintage and some new pickups for the months of August and September 2023. And we've got a whole load to get through. So sit back, relax and let's get to it. Right then, so we're starting off with these, which are these uh, little phrase books. And um, I picked some of these up at my recent trip to uh, Morris's and uh, he'd had a, a big run of um, uh, Penguin books come in, a big collection from a long time collector. And I was able to get pretty much first first pick of it all. And um, I've been trying to collect these uh, phrase books. There's 13 in all. And I'd love to have them all in first edition. And the way you can generally tell the first or early editions is that the, the name of the language is in a specific font, um, which is appropriate to the actual language in question. And uh, they're all different colours as well. And uh, I've got some already, but I didn't want to leave these behind because they might be upgrades to what I've got already. And... Uh, I've been uh, buying off Morris for, for well, decades, really, since the 90s, and uh, he always gives a very good price, and uh, he's such a, a nice guy. So uh, if you've not seen my uh, little recent book buying trip to Morris's, which is All You Need Is Books, which is uh, the website, um, you can only, you can't go there, unfortunately. Um, Morris let me because, as I said, I've known him a long time, and I generally uh, film my visits for the channel uh, for him. But if you do see something... On his website that you want just send an email um his uh, two sons are both actively involved doing the mail order side of things nowadays and uh just go to the all you need is books website and uh everything that's available will be on there and there are uh, certainly lots of penguin and pans and things like that as well as loads and loads of other publishers so uh there's plenty to sink your teeth into he's currently still sorting all this penguin stock so uh i think that's one of the reasons why he invited me along so i could help clear the decks a bit because i bought quite a bit today um not there wasn't loads of like main series titles and rare crime or anything like that at all um it was um i would call it minor series so sort of pelicans uh penguin new writing specials reference books penguin classics that sort of thing so um that's fine with me because i collect anything pre sort of 19 or pre ispm penguin is what i'm into and a little bit afterwards that's a really nice one so um there was lots for me to see of course but there may not be that much for the actual uh book collector per se but that's a that's a nice one got Germany here which I don't think I've ever seen um, in the flesh before it's interesting it's got a little look at that. rates of exchange after devaluation 1967 how interesting it's got a nice little insert books a bit beaten up but with these as long as they're all there I don't really mind and this one does seem just about complete, if a little warm. Now, because we've got so much to do today, and we really, really have, I'm going to sort of do some of it as we go along. It's just going to be just to sort of get, get those bits done, because we really, really do have lots to do today. I did think about splitting this up into a couple of videos, but um, I've got such a busy schedule with new new videos planned and other stuff coming up on the channel um, I would end up getting a bit behind and we don't want that to happen do we <sighs> um, sadly on my recent trip to Morris's and uh, my friend Bob the uh, Dorset Bob the uh, science fiction specialist dealer um, my friend Steve the Outlaw books there couldn't come along with me because sadly he caught Covid but he's A1 now and uh, we're looking to go up again in just a couple of weeks' time, so that's cool. So you can see here that those are numbered, and those are just like a year or two afterwards at ISBN. So the whole run of the original 13 came out over the course of about two and a half years. So uh, there we are. Now, there, I said I did get um, some handbooks, and I got some reference books as well. This is one of the, the reference ones. Um, I got nice, nice wedges of science fiction to go through as well, um, and so just some general old, older paperbacks. I've had um, some cool viewer donations as well, which is excellent. 
or rather one big viewer donation so uh, I shall show you that in a moment and we've even got an odd comic as well so uh, you're going to see it all today plus numerous new books that have come my way for review on the channel so uh, I like to do a little recap of everything that's come in recently most of them will have their own dedicated review in time or it's already been reviewed so uh, there's just another chance in case you might have missed the original video another chance you'd actually see what's recently been published because I like books about books and sort of the history of books and magazines that's one of my real specialties I love reading about the publishers and things like that so there has been a, a couple this month or the last sort of two months really for us to uh, get stuck into um, I have also been to um, a, a couple of shows I've done the Maffred show I recently did um, the Plymouth DevCon convention which was cool um, you may have seen I haven't actually bought it with me today because the book is as clean as I can get it um, I picked up the Penguin book called Artifacts Intervenes. Now, what that one was, was a, uh, you know, another wartime crime, which meant that I was just too short to complete the 1,000, the first 1,000 Penguins in first edition. So I still need two books. But one of the ones I need is this, which is Speedy Death. But this is the reprint of it. And uh, because Morris had a copy, I've seen, I've seen the reprint go from between £3 and thirty pounds for this for this like reprint copy of it. This is, um, I believe, is it nineteen forty six? It might even be slightly later than that. But it's uh, yeah, nineteen forty six. Um, that was the first print in May. There was an even scarcer reprint in October, and this is the forty six one. This one is the one that you tend to find. And um, as I said, I've seen dealers charging up to thirty pound for this one, which is insane. So I got this one off uh, Morris for just a few pounds. Uh, it was like three pounds. He said it was in a bit of a state, but I said I don't mind because it's just going to be a placeholder now until the actual first edition of Speedy Death uh, turns up. Um, I did see, I have seen sort of in the last 12 months, probably three copies turn up, uh, a couple online. Uh, well, one online, which was hammered. Um, I've seen one on a Penguin dealer's list where it was sealed bids and uh, didn't win enough, didn't bid enough. Um, and there's no way to do a counter bid. And another one where it's names out of a hat. So and my name wasn't picked out early enough, so I didn't get it then either. So basically, um, I, there's three copies of this book out there. So eventually one is going to turn up and I'll, uh, I'll be able to grab probably really cheap. And I'll be like really smiling. Um, but until that does, this is going to do for the time being. Um, <clears throat> got a mark inside and a name inside. Now, the other book I'm after um, is called Death on the Borough Council, which is another crime one. That's the, the other one of the two I need. And uh, one of those turned up on eBay recently. It's the first one I've seen on eBay in ages. You know, like a few years, I think. And um, one of my viewers alerted me to it. I had a saved search, so it turned up in my emails the next day to say that one had turned up on the eBay platform. And um, it went for 365 with a detached front and back cover, which is absolutely insane. So whoever's paid that, I know the book is rare, but it ain't that rare. So, uh, well, good luck to them. Obviously, perhaps slightly more money than sent there, but it is rare, you know, don't get me wrong. It may be a year until another one turns up on the open market, but 365 for a book in that condition didn't seem that great to me. That's rather nice, isn't it? So I'm collecting American editions of Harry Harrison at the moment and he is an author I, I read a bit on holiday and uh, I really am enjoying him uh, I read some as a kid as a teenager and liked them um, I used to be very much into the stainless steel wrap but of course that's only one tiny bit of what he actually wrote uh, had huge uh, huge output so uh, I'm trying to pick up the American ones and he's not expensive to collect at all so that's really cool um, the other thing I've been on a bit of a kick on is um, British, well, and some American SF anthologies. I absolutely love them. And uh, here's a few here that we can uh, have a look at. I'm going to put these books in two piles because some of these can be polished, like this one. But this old penguin, it can. So I don't want to get any polish near that at all. Um, the phrase books can all be polished, actually. So that's good. So I'm going to start a couple of piles. And... Um, 
we'll sort of do these as we go along and the stuff that I can actually polish I will do as we uh, as we go through it some of this is a bit dusty so look, one of the things Morris has got going is he's got a um, a one pound like book barn as it were and um, it's a little like sub sub home where he's um, knocking out like his lower grade stuff a bit like this books that have got faults for just a pound a pop and uh, I thought this is too good to leave behind for a pound so I picked it up now it has got this bit of the bottom of the spine coming off so I'm going to pop a little bit of glue in there and uh, hopefully that'll just be enough to uh, need a bit more than that to keep that bottom of the spine in place it's an old pyramid but you know, for a pound, that's just too good to leave behind, really. I know I shouldn't because space is at a bit of a premium, but I'm trying to have a bit of a, a clear out and a, a slight change around of, of the collection a little bit. Um, it looks as if the Star Wars toys will be going towards the end of November as a dealer who's uh, going to be coming down to have a look then. And you know, it looks like it, you know, he's going to have them. So when that happens, that will create a lot more room, of course. Um, where I store my books, but long term, um, the wife and I are thinking now we might move house to somewhere slightly different and try and buy somewhere a bit more purpose built, as it were, where we've got room to uh, build a library downstairs. So, there's, you know, because it's going to be floor to ceiling with an island in between. That is the plan. There we are. That'll do. It's not, not great, but it's going to be absolutely fine to read that one. I'll just give it a brush and a polish in a minute. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. So we're hoping to move house. This is a real nice one. More Adventures in Time and Space. There is an original. I think there might even be a third volume of it. This is a, a series of American hardback anthologies. Um, sometimes the uh, uh, when these anthologies are put into paperback, they, they drop a story or two occasionally. Um, but I'm willing to live with that because I've got so many already. Um, there's bound to be a bit of like crossover really, you know, so I'm not ultimately too worried. But what a nice book that is, isn't it? So I'll give that a nice polish in a minute. This is another one here. So this is great. This is probably one which my friend uh, Steve would like. It's the best of Harry Harrison, but with an introduction by um, Barry Marlsberg, an author he really likes. And uh, this is a first first printing as well. Yeah, pocketbook, nineteen seventy-six. Now another <laughs> penguin handbook. So you're going to see a real mixture of stuff today. Some of these handbooks I picked up, you know, I mean, you don't really see them on dealers' catalogues very often. Um, the earlier ones I particularly like because they tend to have almost like bespoke covers. Well, they are bespoke, obviously, for each book, but they're um, they're just more arty than these later ones where they tend to just think they can get away with a little montage of, of photographs, which is what they've done there. Or even worse, they tend to uh, do something like this, which these are my, you know, these are the ones I don't really like, um, where it's just a single photograph, but they are, in effect, quite scarce. And... Um, I wouldn't say they were mega collectible in a million years, but they are collected. And I certainly like the Penguin Handbooks. This one's got a little bit of, <clears throat> a little bit of something there. So let me just uh, get that off a bit of the binding. Off with its head. That wasn't a very good job. There we are. Let's go. Rock gardens. If only, eh? All right. <laughs> so yeah. So there will be a few uh, few penguin handbooks and things like that in the old uh, books today. But there will also be a real mixture of um, some science fiction, loads of uh, compact SF as well. Um, I picked up quite a bit off Dorset Bob, including a nice run of the paperback versions of New Worlds, which is one that I really, really uh, like. I'd love to collect all of New Worlds, but there's just 
so many scarce, well not so many scarce, but there are some scarce ones. The magazine format ones are rare. The very earliest, like three or four are rare. And the very final issue is, is super scarce. And there are such a variety of formats as well. It's uh, it's really bizarre. So um, there you go. Oh, another one of those handbooks. But the paperback ones, um, I think I'm more than happy to collect those and they're easy to store as well. So it's got quite a bit inside here. But that's all right. That's why we're going through these book by book. And I'm imagining, because we're not very far into this already, and it's already a quarter of an hour, we have got a long video today. Even before we've started, I reckon it could hit three hours with the amount of stuff that we've got to go through. Maybe, maybe a bit less. I don't know. We'll see. But it's going to be... Uh, Quite a long one, I think. But I know you don't mind. <sighs> Get yourself a cup of, t cup of tea or a coffee. <sighs> and relax. That's what it's all about here, you know. <sighs> Sit back, relax. That's what we like. Ah, actually, I'm not sure if I've even uh, cleaned this one, so let's just make sure they're both spick and span. Yeah, okay. So this next one here is another vintage penguin. It's uh, a wartime one, a uh, cruise of the cachalot. I couldn't really remember how good mine was, but it's from that sort of scarce wartime period, so I didn't really want to leave this behind because it was cheap. You know, just like a pound or so. So I suspect this is better than the one I've got. And um, the thing with these wartime ones, the uh, the pinkness of the spine fades um, if it's got any sort of sunlight on it. So um, that is why I've grabbed it. So it's got a date here, 6th of April, 44. And it's right in the middle, or right towards the end of the, uh, the Second World War. But Britain was still suffering. So it's printed under uh, wartime paper rationing conditions. The pages are very, very thin. <sighs> the print one of the first edition was never that high. And consequently today, these are the sort of books that are actually the scarcest of all penguins. Simple as that. And that is a really nice copy. Look at that, 1944. So I'm very pleased with that one. I'm certain it's an upgrade to what I've got, but that is in the non-polishing pile. This is another odd, um, this is a reference one rather than a handbook, but I, I, because it's so distinctive, I knew it was one that I uh, didn't have. Look at that, 10 shillings, it's 50p when this is published, but it looks like it's been hardly read. Book of World Events. Reference number 17. 1960. That'd be okay to polish, I think. Let's get a... something on the back there. Yeah, but it's amazing. Some of these books I just never, never seen. Uh, pleased to get this one. This is uh, one of the games covers. So I picked up a, I would say a horde, a horde of games covers. Um, and there's more I've got left to pick up um, a little bit later in the month. Um, I'm going to go through all the ones that I've got myself. So I've got the best possible copies that I can find. Um, but I have got a little, a couple of uh, collectors who I've promised my spares to. So, um, but I will, basically I'll get them all because they're highly prized by collectors, these games covers, I think. And, um, you know, you sometimes see them at really stupid prices and then and they shouldn't be m mega money. But I think, you know, they do have a value, let's put it that way, you know, but not not some of the, like, I've seen some at £15, surely they're not selling at that price, you know, that's just crazy for books that are like mid-50s, you know, it just doesn't seem like they should be selling for that much, but you never know. Anyway, I picked up plenty um, because I know some of my own ones are very much on the rough side, should we say, so here we are, a little tempence on here. And 
And these little handbooks, these were the sort of books that you would pick up for like 10p just because it's Penguin, you know. Um, and I don't, when even when you see them on dealers' catalogues, they're only ever a couple of quid. You know what I mean? They, they're, they're never expensive. Um, I've got them slightly less than that from Morris, but uh, because I bought so many. Um, but they're not mega ma money, but a couple of them are particularly, they just got really gorgeous covers in that. Like the first aid one and the early cookery ones are really nice. So this one has got a sticker inside on the inside, so I'm hoping it's going to behave itself. Bit of an unusual place to find a sticker, isn't it? 25p. To leave it to cook. Yeah, it's going to leave a little mark, but it's better than the uh, sticker, I would say. In my humble opinion, there we are. The slow cooking method, well, great way to cook. Wouldn't it be interesting if someone could do one of those, like, pastiche covers, and they could do uh, the Penguin Handbook to the Ninja <laughs> Air Fryer. <laughs> be good, wouldn't it? Right. This is one I know I need to upgrade. So once again, I was particularly pleased to find this because the copy I've got, I know, is in quite a shape. It's um, actually a Zane Grey, and I've actually read a couple of these, uh, Zane Greys, that is, and they were pretty good. So I'm going to keep my uh, my other one and, and give it a read, I think, since this is an upgrade. I'll have a spare of it, unless one of my uh, friends really, really wants the game's cover that I've got for this one. Even this isn't perfect, but it's uh, it's an upgrade to what I've got, which is uh, all that matters. Here's another uh, handbook here. He and she. Uh, yeah. Book on relationships by the look of it. Keep this book. Okay. Keep this book, Myra. It's come, a, come away a little bit at the uh, top of the spine there. So what I'm going to do... Is slide some glue in there, some Pritt stick. That blob should really do it, I would think, pretty much. Maybe another little blob at the top. spine as well yeah I'm just gonna slide a bit in there as well That'll do. It's the sort of thing you just don't come across very often anymore. These are already 50 strokes, 60 years old, these handbooks. And uh, apart from the really like instructional ones, like say how to play chess, for example, and things like that, these other ones, you know, they're so out of date. Um, I remember uh, there's one I've got in my collection now. Now it's called the Adole Adolescent Child or something like that. I mean, what they're probably advising you to do in that is, is probably not, you know, the way it's thought of today. So, um, you know, you can tell. I must make sure when I polish some of these that the certain marks in that are given a good good rub. Oh, this is nice. So I picked up a few doors. Um, there was a few in Morris's one pound bookshop, so I was delighted because I've got quite a list of doors that I'd still need. I'm trying to pick up the first sort of five, between five and 600 doors, of which I've got about two thirds, maybe even slightly more. Um, the ones with the classic yellow, yellow spines, which I think are just the business. And um, I try and, I've got a few which are reprint, but not many, but um, most of mine are first editions like that because it's got the number one at the bottom. That's the way to um, determine it's a first printing, basically. This is another one from Morris's pound section. And um, some of them, 
they're in the pound section in his shop because um, he's just got extra copies of them. But this was a, a pretty decent condition, science fiction ace double. Not the best of authors or anything like that. It was a distributed one. It's got a TP, Thorpe and Porter with the TP, the Indians TP as their logo. Um, but it's, it's quite a nice one and a uh, pound, I'm not going to complain. This was another one which is in the pound section at Morris's. I just picked it up because I thought, well, how bad can it really be? So obviously it's not going to be the quality of my friend Steve's science fiction book, but who's who in science fiction? Probably not a bad little read, this one. And I've got a similar book from my friend Bob, um, which he's given me a hardback, which uh, I shall show you in a minute. Um, it's got a couple of bits of writing in, but this was bought for the content, not for like the collectability or even for the jacket, which is quite, quite plain. Um, it was bought for the content, that one. Here's another anthology, The Astounding Analog Reader, edited by Harry Harrison and Brian W. Aldous. In a lot of cases, some of these, the American editions, are actually a bit more attractive than the British. But I don't mind the British ones. It's all about the content. And this one has got, well, basically, that's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you could say, novellas, couldn't you, in that one? I suppose the most famous is Nightfall by Isaac Asimov. And all quite early, the early years, the astounding from the 30s and 40s, you could say the golden age of science fiction, which I read a lot of as a kid, but haven't read a lot of recently because some of it I do find a little bit clunky. But anyway, Thomas Burnett Swan, take the miniature, that's a nice jacket, isn't it? This is a Mayflower. Once so again, this was from Morris's one pound bookshop, so I didn't want to turn this one down. Can't really see anything wrong condition-wise on that one. He must have just had some duplicates of it. Um, I was pleased to get this. This is this ticks two boxes for me really, because it's Philip Jose Farmer, who I am collecting, and it's also a door that um, I didn't have. Um, so in that first 500 door, I think there's six Philip Jose Farmers, um, including the really nice The Book of Philip Jose Farmer, which I really recommend. That's fantastic that one but this is all right i didn't actually check to see if it was a first it is march 76 got a little signature there next to it but that'd be absolutely fine for me it's got a little bit of tanning in that but i'll give it a polish i think it'll uh it'll be all right this one i definitely have got but i don't think i've got one in this nice condition so when i bought this it was really like curled up from morris's one pound shop again but it's got a little, few little marks on the front cover which i suspect We'll be able to uh, um, we'll be able to get those out. Exchange your books outside the Exmouth Arms in the Exmouth Market. There we are. So that's an outdoor market copy. Cool. You can even see some of the dust flying off this one. <clears throat> Look at that. Nineteen fifty seven. What what a great jacket that is, Gordon. And he did a few of the pan science fiction, and they've got this incredible incredible sense of. Um, Perspe uh, perspective you know that's what these have really got and uh, I'm certain that that is a better copy than the one I've got so I will have a spare of that if someone wants it on my next sort of sales video and in actual fact from my friend Bob um, he's given me a whole load of um, uh, really nice pan and badger stock to offer to you guys so um, look out for that sales video quite soon this is another little anthology just needs a bit of a clean 13 great tales of science fiction got John Wyndham there Arthur C. Clarke, Damon Knight for the Sturgeon. Some good stuff there, actually. This is a Coronet. Let me see when it was published. Uh, 1960. Coronet Books Edition, 1967. So this was a Fawcett Gold Medal before it was a before it was a, a Coronet, an early Coronet. Let's uh, start a third pile because these are all going to be polished, brushed and polished in a minute. Now, this is one I was uh, pleased to get another copy of because it's an, another one that's um, it's it's quite tough to find this in nice condition. I think this one, this is one of the harder ones. Um, it's got an actual signed Abraham Games jacket on this one. And apart from this tiny little nick on the back, I think it was a really, it appears to be a really nice copy of this. 
Yeah, and it's the first penguin. Look at that. A little one pound fifty inside. So yeah, apart from that little neck, I can't really complain at that. I don't think. Another nice uh, games. Give that a brush in a minute. Another nice games upgrade there. So that's cool. I've got some more here. Let's pull this pile over. So this one is once again another upgrade to the one that I've got. It's got a bit of tape on the front. And it's funny, the one I've got is in not in the greatest of shape. It's quite a thick book. It's not the first printing by Penguin, it's a reprint with this jacket on. So anyway, this is definitely still, believe it or not, better than the one that I've got. So I'm going to do the best I can to clean this and get it as good as possible. bent over corners. Now this has got tape along there and if I take that off it's just gonna um, it's gonna ruin the book. However it has got on the back here part of the bottom of the spine coming away. So that I do want to address. So I'm going to get some, put a stick in there. lovely that is as good as i'm going to be able to get it i'll give it a brush and i'm going to give it a polish but that is still amazingly better than, better than the one i've got all right so here's a book that some people will, in, will enjoy the penguin salad book um interesting cover there the art of salad making See, these I think are going to clean up really, really nicely once we get the old Mr. Sheen on them. But first, we'll check inside. Give that a 50p out. <sighs> like so. And this one's also got a sticker on the inside cover. I can't believe where this sticker is. The little 34. What does it mean? 34, we don't know. Teasing it off. There we are. Salad book is good again. I'm, I'll wager there's no other channel in existence, particularly on YouTube, but in existence where you're going to find cookery books shoulder to shoulder with classic science fiction. It just ain't going to happen, is it? <laughs> that is a lovely one, that. Once again, a few little marks on it which should clean up all right. Another one, like any any wife or any husband. Sexual problems in married life. Well, wow. it's funny you thought, I mean, it's released as a handbook, but this is sort of crossover with a pelican, really, wouldn't it? 20p. <sighs> Doesn't quite get all off. Rub. God damn you, rub. 
There we are. And this is an American one, a Bernard Shaw. Um, I picked up a couple. Um, this one isn't too bad condition. I don't have, I don't have many American penguins. I got a few, but not loads, you know. Yeah, first penguin of the screen adaptation. That's all right. A book of French wines. Well, I have to say, French wines are my favourite wines, particularly the soft reds and the Merlots, with a nice plate of um, pasta. Now you are talking. Very, very nice. And that is a nice copy of that one. That's all right, that. And then um, there's quite a lot of poetry at Morris's, and once again, I shall, uh, next time I go up, I'll have my list completely updated, so I'll be able to get it. This one I couldn't leave behind. What a great, great jacket. And the penguin poetry is actually synonymous with having fantastic jackets. They're just really, really great. This one's going to take a little bit of um, sorting out because it's a bit wobbled. But ultimately, it's a nice copy. And uh, I have got all the early sort of penguin poetry with the like more generic tri-band covers. I've got all of those. But the later ones, um, sort of the mid-period, all had these fantastic like M papers as the covers. And then the penguin modern peng modern poets had some very interesting covers again. So there's three sort of very distinct styles with penguin poetry. And uh, I quite like them all, even though I'm not a massive poetry fan. Um, I don't mind collecting them, shall we say. Now, this is interesting. This is um, like a, almost like a library edition. It's one that was produced uh, with a, like a Hessian cover to make it more um, more hard wearing, really. And, and um, usually they're, they're from schools. So that the property of the Nautical College in Pangborn. So these generally were sent to libraries and or colleges. Some were sent overseas. This is just one of about 200 that were published in this particular format. Um, I don't know why they stopped, but you don't really see them very often. I don't think I've, you know, I've got any others in my collection, I don't think, but it's the sort of thing because they're scarce, um, I don't really wanna not pick them up nowadays, you know, so so that's what it is. It's got a couple of um, little frays on the front jacket, which I'm gonna try and, dig off because it's got this sort of almost like a hessian cover to it there's one bit one on the back here as well and there we are and a bit on the spine which actually just came off in my hand so the first 18 volumes in Penguins Shakespeare and the Penguin Shakespeare. So there we are. So quite an unusual one. And I'd say there's there's quite a few in this well, 200, I believe. 200 books in this series. So uh worth keeping your eyes out for that. That won't be polished, so that is either on a separate pile. The same for this one. So um although it's really dusty, so it's the Penguin New Writing. It's the first volume. It's the main series, number 305. Um, it's going to need some glue in there in a minute, but it's really dusty. This is also um, the first time that Penguin Books printed um, George Orwell. This is the first appearance of George Orwell in Penguin. Outright, full stop, which was uh, for this one, which is um, the opening story, Shooting an Elephant by George Orwell. What an amazing, amazing uh, short story that is and um if you're at all interested i have actually did i actually like did a narration of that particular one um which i've had lots of um teachers and students contact me said they've they've told their students to watch stroke listen to my uh reading of shooting an elephant because it's really good so that was quite nice praise wasn't it now oh, this one's actually like it's almost there we are in actual fact that's going to be much easier to do so it's just there we are. The glue on these is just falling to bits. It is, after all, quite old. So let's just... Ironically, Penguin New Writing Volume 2 
is also number number 305 there was a little mistake and they uh, they made a, an error so uh, if you ever look for penguin 305 in the first 1000 penguins there's actually a thousand and one because there's two copies of number 305 which is penguin you writing one and two anyway let's run some glue along there this is a massive improvement over my other my current copy which i've had for years it was one i found in the wild and i never never have upgraded it a little bit along here as well and that should be more than enough to keep this in place So there we are, George Orwell's first appearance in Penguin. You saw it here, and it's not an expensive book. One in that shape, because that is unusually nice for the first Penguin you write in. I would be tempted to put like four to five quid on that, you know. But the rest of the series, even the wartime ones, are only about three, three pound each. It's a, it's a cheap series to collect, you know. Anyway, very interesting though, very interesting. I've done a, a whole video on, on the series, which um, I shall pop a link up to uh, right now for you. Uh, another little anthology. This was a, a horror anthology. Um, is it? Yeah, I think it's a horror one. Six and the Silent Scream. Oh, oh no, it's science fiction. Look, Vulcan's Hammer, Philip K. Dick. I think, yeah, let's look at this. Oh, yeah. Vulcan's Hammer. So that's cool. Riddle of the Deadly Paradise. Farfine. Peace on Earth. A Robert Sheckley Ask a Foolish Question. D.A. Jordan. Okay. 1968. A console. Not a publisher you might think of for science fiction in actual fact, but an interesting cover. It looks more like horror, a horror anthology to me. Bit of a worn old copy, this, but sort of too good to leave behind, really. Particularly since it's got a Philip K. Dick in there. So, um, the best of Sky-Fi. Well, we prefer the term SF around these here parts nowadays. But it's still used quite a bit, isn't it? The expression, even today. Um, not a lot we can do with that. That's absolutely fine. Just needs a bit of a bit of a polish and a brush. And we can do that. Bit of the covering needs folding back. There we are. Yes. This one I've picked up uh, simply to read. Um, copies of Jaws, even just reprints, which is what this is, just seem to be going for stupid money online. And I only wanted a copy to read. And I've, uh, I thought, well, I'm bound to come across one. It was such a big seller in a charity shop or something, and I just haven't. So um, consequently, Morris have one in his one pound shop. So I grabbed that, but it has got a bit of a torn spine. But I remember reading this as a kid or around the time the movie was big, sort of 77, 78. There was a bit of a Jaws phenomenon. It went on for years. And uh, I know Jaws itself was more 75, but I absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. So, um, yeah, it's got a little bit of, as I recall, top of the spine, is it? Yeah, it's in there. So I actually have a bit of glue on the end here. So I'm just going to slide that in there. And hopefully that'll be all it needs to put Jaws where it belongs. I'll do as I said I just want a copy to read that's all I wanted it for so uh, why was it so difficult for me to, to find a copy right another little little pile here so the year's best science fiction another one edited by uh, Harry Harrison and Brian Aldis they seem to have done so many of these um, and obviously there's going to be some crossover 
but I don't mind. Mm. Okay, this is the 1970 reprint. It's not the first, so it is a reprint, but some good stuff in there. And a new Harry Harrison introduction and an afterward by Brian Aldous. Um, a couple more of these Penguin handbooks. What was that inside? Nothing at all. So I'm just using that as a bookmark. I like to get rid of the foreign bodies. Oh, look at this. Look, that's another one where the spines just, just come away. So I'm going to try and tactically get some glue in there. My book and Delilah's, don't I? Oh, sorry, Dahlia's, not Delilah's. Other than that, that's a stonking copy of that one. Very, very nice, nice glossy, glossy cover. That will come up very nice. They're not all glossy, but some of them have different levels of glossiness. Roses. Now, is that pencil or pen? Oh, it looks like it's pencil. Hazar. <sighs> Lovely. Lawns. Tempe, look at that. Couple of pages torn, uh, turned over. at some point. There we are. Just what we need, eh? Book on lawns. Well, here's a classic. It can't be denied. Animal Farm. Penguin 838. Another nice Orwell. We like him. First printed in 1951. Now, I suspect, yes, it's that period where they just weren't that great. The glue, after 70 years, if the book's been stored in a hot environment, it's just ended up drying out a little bit. Now, the back cover is actually quite well attached, so I've just folded it back. I get a nice, generous glob of glue in there. And we shall pop this back to its former glory. Old George would be proud, I'm sure. Because he's a good egg. There we are. And I suspect that's actually slightly better than my own. Unless I'm thinking of 1984, which is slightly lower grade than I was hoping. But um, all all well in Penguin is good. And um, I'll just uh, see which one is the better. Keep it for myself and... Uh, I will have a spare animal farm in my next uh, sales video. Um, this is more in keeping with the, the Penguin handbooks that I like. It's a little bit earlier, but it's got its own sort of illustrated jacket rather than a photograph. And uh, these are the ones that I particularly like. The very, very best ones actually have the penguin um, slightly modified, the penguin logo, so uh, to tie in with the book in question which is even better. Like the Penguin Book of Chess, I think, has got it. The Penguin logo looking like a chess piece, for example. There we are. This is the revised edition, published as a Penguin Handbook in 1961. The Spare Time Book. 
Well, this is what I'm doing in my spare time. I'm filming videos for you guys, but it's all good. This is my hobby, and uh, I love doing it. I love it. Lovely. That's really nice. The Art of the Middle Game. I like Penguin's chess books, and uh, I don't mind playing chess at all. Mainly on chess.com. That's sort of the... Uh, the app that you can download, it's got a website as well. You can play classic games, that's a little bit brittle there. You can play classic games on chess.com and uh, they're the ones I like. That's actually come away ever so slightly there. It's okay, we're all right. And uh, yeah, chess is uh, not bad at all. When my son was growing up, he used to like playing it. The art of the middle game. Right, that's all the ones of the smaller size. So um, out of this particular lot. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give all them a brush, first of all. And I'm gonna give them a polish while we're at it, I think. So these are the ones, the little pile of penguins that cannot be polished, of course, because their paper cover is in effect. And we don't want to, um, we just don't want to uh, get any sort of liquid or fluid near them at all. That's the brushing done on those. to just do these and we'll give them a brush first then we'll do the polish so we've got three stacks to brush Right, that's the first pile done, brushed anyway. You just wouldn't believe the dust it makes, you know, on some of these. 
can be quite a mucky process, yeah. And these uh, have all been done already. Okay. Right, that's all the brushing done. Okay, then, so I've got my uh, Mr. Sheen, my polish of choice for when I'm doing old paperbacks, and uh, I usually give it a bit of a straight on squirt like that, first of all. And then we'll just get, get cleaning. Now some of these, of course, are gonna leave it quite a bit more than others. And others, it won't actually make that much difference, but on the whole, if the book's got a glossy cover, I think it's probably worth doing. In a lot of cases, it's not obvious dirt that you're lifting up, but that, but when you actually, I've just done three books here, and I think that up close, they all look an improvement over what they were. Look at the, uh, look at the dirt we've got up off three books. So it just shows there is, there is dirt there. Sometimes you just have to, uh, rub it out and, and get to it really you know 
which is what we're doing. Yeah, I think out of the uh, handbooks we've seen so far today, and I should say we've still got some new books, we've got viewer donations, and I've got about this many books again to come. So this is going to be a long old video. I think so far this is the best looking handbook we've uh, we've come across. These picture covered ones I'm not such a fan of, but they're part of the penguin story, so they have to be included. It is the law, after all. I'll slowly work my way down to a cleaner bit on the cloth as we work our way through the books, the many piles of books. really really nice once they've had the first clean of their uh, sometimes 60 year lives Orders. Well, here it is, the salad book. Stand by your beds.
this US one here, which I haven't got. I said I've not made a, a point of collecting the American ones really, but they're quite nice when, they, when you come across them, you know. It's got a 20 piece sticker on the back. I completely missed that during quality control. We repaired the spine, didn't we? But we didn't uh, have a stab at this sticker. I said I bought this one literally to read rather than like, put in the collection per se. I have got a Jules book which is called the Jules Log, which is the making of Jules, the movie, which is pretty cool. This is just the original novel. In slightly worn but readable condition. What does the blurb sound about? Pick up jewels before midnight. Read the first five pages and I guarantee you'll be putting it down breathless and stunned. The final climax is even better than the beginning as dawn is breaking the next day. And that's a high praise. It was a very, very successful novel. It was Jules in its day. Very successful indeed. to get this one. Nice upgrade. I believe it's an upgrade to the one that I've got. Pretty certain it is. Got lovely uh, white pages on it. Nice indeed. Uh, that pile done. Let's do these uh, phrase books.
Hmm. It's all Greek to me. This one's particularly grubby, to be honest. I think still an improvement. In fact, I don't know. I don't think I've got the Spanish one at all. I can't remember now. a bit of a tatty one this Germany but it's so unusual to actually come across them in the wild that uh, I didn't want to leave them behind really and this one I haven't got in any condition so I uh, definitely had to pick this up
pleased with this one. This is a real nice copy of this one. Compared to most out there. The little marks on the cover there. I'm just going to put them on and leave that there for a minute.
so it's still left a couple of little marks but they're not too bad not too bad at all to be honest still a very very nice nice copy and that'll, that'll flatten out lovely so yeah not too bad right um okay the last pile of this of about half we're about halfway through once this is done believe it or not so uh, we're not doing too badly just one more stack to uh, polish and i think after this we'll do um some of the more recent books that i've picked up plus some sort of large format stuff that's come my way but we'll just do this last stack look at the cloth look at the dirt we picked up off it absolutely incredible but this is such a long video i'm going to film it over two days so i'm doing this on a thursday i'm working tomorrow so i'll finish it off on um on saturday because it's just such an epic as you can see it's it's really it's not a month's worth of pickups it's more two months worth you know um so that's why it's such a long video this time around but i know you don't mind and these videos are always very very popular people love seeing what i've picked up and the process i go through when i clean my books so i hope you don't mind the extra length and actually it's considered a bonus These uh, handbooks on the whole have got quite glossy covers, which does make them easier to clean. Which is good. find a clean slice of uh, cloth for this one.
So what we've done already sometimes would have constituted enough for an entire monthly pickups video, but we're not even halfway. We've got uh, what I do when we start the the cameras rolling next will be uh, the viewer donations, uh, which is only one lot, but it's a particularly good lot, and also. Uh, the latest books that I've received in the post and uh, review copies and books that I've bought myself that I've been enjoying. So we'll go through those and then we'll do the second half of all the vintage pickups of which it's just basically more of the same. More Penguin, more loads more science fiction and that really big run of uh, New Worlds science fiction. So do stay tuned and if you're not into the, uh, the cleaning part of it just zoom ahead in the video. To that bit and uh, you can enjoy that. Smells a bit smoky, this one. We'll take a break from here and go and do a bit of editing instead of actual cleaning and uh, it'll be the blink of an eye to yourselves but to me it'll be two days later when I next tackle the, f the final batch of these so a couple of bigger pieces that came my way on the same haul and we are on day two of filming this video now so hopefully i'll get it all licked today um, but here we are science fiction monthly this was like um a promotional poster and if you have a look each panel is just slightly um larger than a paperback and i think this was like some sort of insert into something but it's a poster advertising that big big tabloid magazine the science fiction monthly and uh I got this off Dorset Bob, who I, I got my original run of Science Fiction Monthlies from. And a nice little bit of uh, New English Library memorabilia, that. Um, and I mentioned I had some great uh, stuff donated by um, a viewer from the channel. Now, that's uh, my friend Paul. Now, Paul um, has sent me a few bits in the past, and I don't know how he finds some of this stuff. It's really uh, fantastic. So I'll try and do all of Paul's bits right now. So... First of all, this is an Ed McBain. It's a Penguin one, but quite interestingly, it has been stamped a pulp copy. Now, Paul sent me an early 70s edition of Hiroshima by uh, John Hershey um, a few months back, which had also been stamped. And I actually floated the uh, the stamp of this book. I said, what is going on uh, with these? Does any of the Penguin Collector Society know what's happening with it? And no one really knew. So um, it looks like Paul has come across something uh, quite unique. And uh, well, we're basically keeping a little track on it at the moment. Um, he also uh, sent me a few bits of uh, Penguin Ephemera. So uh, this is a really, really nice one. In actual fact, it's probably one of my favourite early uh, bookmarks yet to um, publicise uh, Penguin's 25th birthday in 1960. And they uh, released a really great batch of books, including... The Gathering Storm by Winston Churchill, which was one of the very earliest sort of Penguin books I read. It's a shame they never did the rest of the series, but absolutely fantastic. Um, this is great. This is a little flyer for the 60s Penguin Isocon Donkey. 
and this was one it was a like this squat little bookcase and there's a beautiful early it's like a 1940s one or late 30s 40s which has got some majestic art art deco curves on it very very expensive and rare although you can buy like a reproduction of it but this is the much more common one the isocon donkey part two or mark two which i do intend to pick one up once i've got a little bit more room um but these tend to go for a couple of hundred pounds on ebay uh, when you find them really really nice a little little flyer for that that probably was inserted once again inside a book he also sent me this, which was a really nice catalog, um, one I'd never seen before. So uh, Pelicans, Penguin Classics, ready for 23rd July 1959. Never seen this catalog before um, and definitely haven't got it. Uh, really, really interesting. So it folds out like so. I'll try and keep this all in picture because they're quite big, some of this stuff. Just highlighting the latest Pelicans. It is really nice to have a dedicated Pelican list like this. Obviously, some other bits as well that they think you might like. If you like Pelicans, you might like the Penguin Classics, the scores, some of their other non-fiction series. Really nice. And the very latest books across all series. The periodicals, some of the scarce bound editions. Don't see those very often. Yeah. Really, really nice that, and obviously unused. So that was uh, super cool. Um, Paul also sent me, we've got some more catalogs to look at, but we'll have a look at these first. These are the, the Penguin Book News. So let's get in a bit closer to these. Yeah, so these are the Penguin Book News. Now I've only got, up until Paul sent me this little batch here, um, I've only got one of these, which is with um, uh, Hemingway on the front, a really, really nice one. And I've always looked out for some more to find, but when you sort of search eBay or places like that and you pop in Penguin Book News, you get like 30,000 um, matches, which is ridiculous. You can't search all of that, but I really love it. In fact, it's straight off, off the bat here. It said the Beatles, um, Michael Avedon, uh, nothing personal. I mean, these are just great. They're really, really of their time uh, showing what Penguin were publishing. And uh, I just love these. I really do. The time with the books so well. There's a new horn blower down there. And the designs as well. Look at these. Look. Alan Aldridge designs. Very, very cool. I really like his stuff. And there we are. And a couple of nice box sets as well, which um, I also really, really love. In fact, that one there, the Pelican. Is that a Pelican one? If it is, I think it's one I've actually got, but I've never seen that one before. So, super cool. So, Paul sent me a few of these. And um, ironically, on my recent trip to Morris's, I found a, a little pile more as well. So, um, But these are the ones I got from Paul. And I think this is uh, really fantastic. So, we got uh, this one's from March 64. May 64. They just put a slight change there. They were earlier ones from June 63. I've got no idea how many there are of these. I really don't. But any sort of penguin sort of related related catalogs i absolutely i just love them to death that was um the cover to the yeah the penguin new english bible which ended up being penguin number 2000 in their main series december 63 here number 64 world book fair is she it's another hemingway cover not one i've seen before even warmer and look at yet another one with that uh, Hemingway on the front so how cool are these they're really really nice so absolutely fantastic though they're just superb I'll do a dedicated video on on those at some point um, now uh, once again these are still from Paul he sort of cleared out his penguin bits and pieces so I'm very very grateful for these um, but this is another catalogue um, just November penguins look published 20th of October 1954 these are just great. I mean, I know Penguin published an awful lot of catalogues, but these are just terrific. I love them so much. One of my favourite handbooks, that. A Game of Chess, or The Game of Chess. They did a few on chess, but that's the first one. This is interesting, so it's like a little fold-out with the stock list and um, the new titles for November. And the same again here. 
And I remember even in my time in the, in the book game in the 80s, 90s and early 2000s, reps would come in. They'd have something very, very similar to this with the titles in print. And they'd just put ones, twos, ones, twos to literally keep the stock up to date. This is before the days of um, it all being ordered automatically by computer. Yeah, superb. So that was from 54. This one's a little bit later at New Penguins for 1958. Aren't they great? I think what I'll probably do when I get my uh, dedicated library built, I'm going to have uh, my whole wall for some of my favourite books and bits of POS and memorabilia. And I take my favourite um, penguin catalogues and other some of my pound ones as well and to get them framed up on the wall i'm also going to put all my early sort of penguin bookmarks and things like that together in like a montage uh, fr and frame it up i think that'll look really really cool um here's another one for 1955 now more of a, a book this one a real proper catalogue it's funny that i've never come across i don't think i've got any in this sort of larger format until now See the smaller ones, sort of the book-sized ones, but not so many in this format. So again, I think that's uh, yeah, that's designed to be pulled out in actual fact. So we won't do that. There we are. It's so very, very nice. And then, so that was it from Paul, which is fantastic. But then I did get a few more bits from Morris, literally you know a few weeks later so morris as i said had that big uh, big collection of penguin and there was a few bits of related memorabilia so this is one from the mid 70s 1974 um this is more i can remember being some in fact i've got some from the 80s and 90s printed on this very cheap paper because the penguin list had got so big they were coming out almost like little books or little booklets as it were then some later issues of the penguin news so these once again i'd never seen these are 70s again similar sort of period and once again, you know, Penguin back then had a particular identity. A lot of the books are photo covers, some really nice art ones still. And uh, just more of the, of the same, really, you know. This is a fold out. Concertina's all the way out. She's a bit mad. Just the sort of thing you would find in bookshops, um, in the staff room of a bookshop. This would be on the, on the table and people would be going through it. So uh, a few here from these early 70s period. Very, very cool. Is this is number eight, number nine. This is like a second run of it. Um, complete list, February 1974. And then um, a few more 60s ones, just, uh, just well, just the one, which is USA, which is one uh, which is now a double, amazingly, but the one Paul sent me slightly better condition. And then I got a copy of this, which is the Penguin Transatlantic magazine. So um, this is a magazine that Penguin published. I think it went for about 40 issues. I've got the first eight in a bound volume, which is really, really nice, like a leather bound volume that I got years ago. But this is a much later one. And uh, it didn't do that well. This is number 30, February 1946. Um, and it just says that published by uh, Penguin Books Limited. So apart from that, there's not a great deal of penguin related stuff in here it's just a normal sort of british magazine and um, i believe it was sold abroad as well it was exported over to the states you know it is it is what it is it's not like full of penguin house ads or anything like that so else it would be much more collectible than perhaps what it is so these go for about six or seven pounds a copy so just i think based solely on their scarcity more than anything else but they're very very nice you don't often come across them um now a couple more just odd books that i picked up recently this is um when i got off ebay it's a particularly scarce pan book um memoirs of a tattooist it's by this chap called george burkett and george burkett was historically a very famous tattooist and uh Pan did one and only printing of this book, and it is copies generally go. I've, well, I've seen them sell for over a hundred, particularly nice ones. The only fault with this one, it's only the one print, 1960. Um, the only fault with this one, it's got that little 5P on the front there. But apart from that, it's a nice square one. It's got a really nice spine on it. Um, and I got mine. I think I paid about 40, 45 for that. So more than I've paid for a pan in a, a long time, I can tell you. Probably 
you know, in a couple of decades, I haven't paid that much for a pan. Um, but it was one that I really wanted. It's a great pan. It's a, it's a lovely cover. And that was less than half the, the usual going rate. So I was really pleased with that. Another real oddity here. Um, so you don't see these very often. <clears throat> so I collect the, the Collins Crime titles, Collins Crime Club. And this one is an export Collins Crime Club. See, it's got the list on there. If we delicately take a look, I have got one other like this, and that retail price in India. This is an Indian export, and I do have, I said, another another one in this format. It's a, it's not a crime one; it's a fiction one. It's really nice with the wavy wavy cover. That was their design, and I've also got a, uh, a services edition for India, uh, but in more traditional Collins Crime Club livery. Very, very good. Yeah, look at that. Reprinted in India. It's just locally printed, not exported. 1946. Look at that. You rarely, rarely see these. And uh, super, super nice to have a crime one as well. Yeah, but look at these. Look, some of the Agatha Christie's. Some good authors in there that I would imagine are quite, quite scarce books. Um, so, yeah, very, very nice indeed. So I'll give these two, because the other bits obviously can't be can't be cleaned just give that a gentle brush it's got a bit of shadow you can sort of see on the front jacket there sort of a bit of shadowing there the brush will probably take up a little bit of it so that's uh, that's really nice i'm really pleased with that one for sure and the tattooist book yeah super scarce I'm happy to take it with that little five pence on the front. That's not the end of the world. It's absolutely fine. And um, I'll just give the, uh, the Emma Bain the dust off. Brilliant. So that was uh, quite a nice little lot. Now, some of you know I've been uh, picking up these DC 100 page super spectaculars. Absolutely love these big, thick uh, DC comics. And I'm not looking for pristine, but I am looking for quite nice copies. And uh, I picked up one this last month, just gone. And a friend of mine in the States has actually uh, found, or well, he's got another two for me, which um, he said sent to his address. So a bit of a tatty old bag and board that one. And I've got a brand new board and miler for um to put this one back in but i thought we'd have a little look at it first so this is dc 18 up there so it's um in the 100 page series i said it's not pristine by any means but it's good enough for me i see it's a little one pound 20 on the back and it's in pencil so i'll see if i can just i think it's in pencil just see if i can lift that off Some of these, unfortunately, like the Batman ones, for example, are quite expensive. And there's some with other, you know, beautiful Neil Adams wraparound jackets and things like this are covers. So I've managed to pick up the tougher ones from the States where for the same money as you pay over here, you get a copy in much, much better condition. So that's uh, that's what I've done. So I've got two in America waiting to come over uh, from my friend chris who uh keeps me a little box of bits and pieces and sends it of off stuff that i see on ebay usa that i can't uh that i don't want to pay separate shipping for so he gets them sent to his house and then sends them over on mass in one one big box and that's the cool way of doing it so i didn't quite get all that pencil off but i got enough of it off in all honesty so yeah it's a superman and it's a mixture of, uh, well, it is all classic reprints, this one. That was the whole point of the 100 pages. And these moved on from the DC 80 pages, which are um, you know, much more perhaps remembered. Um, July 1973. And uh, yeah, this has got a Superman story, a Golden Age Atom, modern sort of Silver Age Atom, um, a Superboy story, Dynamite, Arrow Man, Captain Triumph, all classic stuff, you know, absolutely classic stuff. This is a, a, a 1940s Superman story. And this is such a great way to read them in an authentic style, um, in an actual uh, 
comic, because let's not forget, even these are 50 years old now. These uh, 1970s 100-pagers, I mean, yeah, half a century. Yeah, I think they represent excellent value for money. You know, you're looking at between 10 and 20 pounds an issue for these nowadays. Obviously more if you want them in absolutely tip-top shape, then they do command a premium. And the classic Atom, I love the Atom. So there we go, some great, great stuff. So I have brought down um, a brand new, I put mine in these Mylar bags that I get from Just Comics, um, which is sort of the collector line run. And they're very, very generous with big, thick comics like these, you know, because you need them to be generous because of their size, their thickness and that, you know. Just so slide them into there. There's no flap to stick down. These very much are just designed to slide in and slide out. I try and square them up so the board is behind them neatly. And that I think is a, a really, really a beautiful, beautiful comic. That, and I shall uh, look forward to adding that one to my uh, to my collection. Really nice unstamped one. And you know, it's only sort of VG finds. It's sort of mid grade. It's not pristine. It's not even a very fine, but it's it's pretty close to that. And that'll do me. So yeah, fantastic stuff. Now I'll make a start of going through some of the recent books that I've picked up. Some were sent to the channel for review. Some of them I just picked up because I just think they're fantastic and I wanted to give them a try, including this one, which is the Digest Enthusiast. Now, I'm not a massive Digest collector. However, I love reading about them and, and the collecting of them. Um, it's just sort of the collector in me. It, it really does appeal. And these have got, well, some great stuff in here. So the Digest Enthusiast. Absolutely stacks of stuff, including some DC Digest as well, which was super cool. So it's it's all genres, science fiction, um, crime, mystery, comics. Everything is catered for. Really, really great. Westerns. Some absolute top stuff in here for you to have a look at. And uh, some great articles as well. Really packed. It's available on Amazon. It's about a tenner and it's 160 pages. I think it's, it's terrific. So I really, really do recommend getting these in, in actual physical form because the earlier issues are available, but I think only as eBooks. So if you want an actual, the actual physical digest magazine, which is almost the size of a digest, in fact, then I would recommend uh, grabbing one off Amazon. So this one here, um, I was lucky enough to interview uh, Steve Holland about his new book. So if you've not seen that video on the channel, uh, do. Um, this is a great book on the trials of Hank Jansen. So Hank Jansen wrote these fantastic, uh, oh, well, Stephen Francis was the author who wrote these Hank Jansen novels. And they're really, really, well, they were quite controversial at the time. And this is the story and it's, it's fantastic. And uh, unfortunately he does uh, get dragged to court and uh, has to go through the ringer a little bit, but the actual, story about how he got started and how the business became so you know the books became such massive bestsellers is a fascinating one and if you're into paperbacks in any sort of way all the history of publishing this book is great and it's really really well written and researched so uh, i highly recommend it and if you are in any doubt and you want to hear a bit more and see some of the beautiful hank jansen uh, jackets um have a look at the video I, I did with the author um because it's fantastic just about a week or so ago and um this one which um i have got it's not published yet, just yet so i've got a dedicated video that's already been filmed because i've finished reading this one now um this is from my friend gary lavisi over in the states um i'll have a dedicated video out in about a week or so's time towards the end of October, early November, when the book should actually be available to buy. But it's fantastic. It's from Stark House, a great reprint publisher. And it's a collection of Gary's articles of the last sort of 40 years looking at publishers uh, in the noir um, genre, plus his favourite authors as well, um, the more collectible titles, uh, books about collect, uh, stories about collecting them. I mean, absolutely fantastic. It's really, really comprehensive. And... Uh, it's like reading a, just a massively long um, issue of Paperback Parade, but uh, beautifully produced, full of great photos, as you can see. And uh, yeah, highly recommended this one. I really, really enjoyed it. I said, look out for the review in about, about a week or two's time. Now, this next offering was from the Men's Adventure Library. Their latest issue is just fantastic. So Atomic Werewolves 
man-eating plants now it comes in two formats um, in fact possibly three i'm not sure if there's an ebook but you have got the hardback and you've got the paperback um i have reviewed this one fairly recently on the channel so you can have a really good deep dive into it but it's absolutely stacked with stuff um from pulled from the men's adventure magazines it's just superb beautifully laid out it's uh, um, full of great great stories absolutely fantastic i've dipped in i reckon i've read half of them now it's just the sort of thing that you can um, dip in and out of when you fancy a quick hit because they are basically magazine stories so they're not too long so you can have uh, have a bit of fun with these and I think they're just absolutely great beautiful artwork on them and um, I love how the authors put the stories into historical context as well for the time that these were written and um, some great names I wrote for them as well in fact this one here uh, the rats in the wall which is by uh, HP Lovecraft no less so you're going to get some good stuff in here I'll tell you that and uh, some fantastic artwork. So highly, highly recommend uh, these books. And if you can afford the hardback, it's an even greater treasure because I believe you will come back to these again and again. So, uh, but it is available in, in both formats and a dedicated video on the channel. Now this last one from the new books, I haven't actually read yet. I've actually had a, a flurry of brand new publications to read and I've saved uh, one of the best to last, I think, which is The Weird Boys. That's by Stephen Jones. And it's a look at, because it's the 100th anniversary of uh, Weird Tales, the, the pulp magazine, um, it's a look at H.P. Lovecraft, Robert E. Howard, and Clark Ashton Smith, um, who all, of course, wrote for the Weird Tales magazine. So Weird Tales is not a magazine I've ever collected. Um, I know the covers of course the really sort of recognizable fantastic beautiful artwork covers um, but I don't know much uh, beyond that so I'm looking forward to reading about the early days of, of of the Weird Tales magazine and how a lot of these authors got their first break through that magazine and uh, I'm certain this is going to be a fantastic read so uh, there's a little example you, you know exactly what to expect with these so I know this is going to be superb really really looking forward to it so um once i've i've given it a read i shall do a nice dedicated review and flick through uh, on the channel probably once again in about a week or two's time after you see this one so uh go and search that one out and this one just looks well it looks fantastic i think it's going to be a real real cracker that one and this is not a new book at all. This is uh, one well, actually published last year. Um, I don't know when uh, this Mirakami Sputnik Sweetheart was first published, but we'll have a little look. Now, these are published by uh, Random House or Vintage Books. And uh, yeah, this was uh, the first of the re-releases. Uh, first, the English translation was 2001. Um, so basically what they've done uh, vintage have released three last year and three this year of uh mirakami classics and this is one of them sputnik sweetheart i'm actually in the middle of reading one at the moment which is the wind up bird chronicle but it's absolutely enormous it's almost 700 pages and i'm uh well i'm three quarters of the way through and it's absolutely fantastic really really like this author first time i've tried him wanted to try them for a long long time and uh, well these editions are particularly nice with the uh with the belly bands as well so um, i was lucky enough to get this one off ebay and it was a fresh printing which is quite good i'm not bothered about that they're just really really nicely designed um editions to read as you can see they've been all reset and uh they're well they're fantastic so uh this is going to be the next one once i've finished uh wind up wind up burp chronicle but yeah as i said there's six of those to get if you do fancy dipping your toe into mirakami they're 20 pound each brand new but you can find them online for about 14 or 15 uh, from a few online sellers so uh recommended right one other new book but it was a new book that was just given to me by my friend bob and um this one actually does have a couple of little marks so what i was going to do actually because i bought this mirakami online i'm just going to give the top edge that brush there it's not mint but it's it's good enough for me you know a couple of little little dings there but um i was speaking to my friend steve the outlaw book set, and of course he sells these brand new those mirakamis and he said they're notorious for just arriving straight from the publishers in in quite beaten up condition because they knock around in the boxes and stuff um so yeah this one was given to be my friend bob and he really really raves about it um and i've actually got um i'm gonna have a sales video of some bits from bob's stock and uh, there's a copy of this included in it like a brand new one but it's basically an encyclopedia and what he says is that you could read a section on a particular author for example and it would give you 
other areas or other authors or books to try at the bottom which is exactly what it does and uh, i think it's going to be quite a good little reference to have by your side when you're perhaps thinking of uh, your next read or if you've maybe read an author who was in an anthology you think well that was pretty good let's look him up and see where it might take you you know so uh, if you're not that well versed in the uh, sf universe this might be quite a handy little guide and uh, um, i think these are uh, Bob's got plenty of copies of these, so he'll be able to knock them out quite cheaply. Uh, so I'm not sure how much it's going to be, but I'll let you know. But we have got a copy for sale. But I was just going to just got this one's got a little mark on the uh, on the cover there, so I'm just going to yeah, that's come straight off there. And uh, yeah, Bob really recommended this one, so I'm going to have it on my shelf and. Uh, I have a little dig through, but it says really good, and uh, it's not that well known out there. Scholar Press, but it's actually really, really nice, nicely produced hardback, and uh, I think you might uh, might well want to invest in a copy of that one. Right, okie doke, that's cool. Uh, next, we've got this one, which is a huge penguin box set. Which once again, it's a penguin reference. Um, and you don't see these very often, so I think I'll just pull the camera out a tad. Well, I can just about squeeze this one in. So, what I think we'll do, um, I mean, the book's inside a mint, but you can see the box, which is not unusual. It's got a few little marks, and to be honest, even though this is a bit worn, this is better than most that turn up these 60s box sets. Um, it was a craze that sort of started the mid-1960s, and, um, well, I mean, certainly when I was growing up in the 70s, um, I would love to get a box set. Um, and they sort of petered out towards the end of the 80s, really, didn't they? Um, these sorts of sets. So, yeah, they're very much a phenomenon of their of their time. Um, but I like them. I've got a few vintage Penguin ones in my collection. Not many, but a few. There's a few I'd definitely like to get. Some science fiction ones. There's a couple of John Wyndham ones. I'd love to get hold of, but they uh, they are a little bit pricey because in a lot of cases you're getting six or seven books as well as the the slip case. Um, but I'm keeping my eyes peeled, and I have got a little sort of retrospective on box sets coming up. Um, I just need like a little bit of planning because um, I don't have stacks, but what I've got is pretty nice. So um, okay, well that's the actual slip case done. Let's get the books out. It's not the most uh, thrilling subject. It is only uh, Penguin reference, but the books themselves are in, uh, well, as you would expect, tip-top shape. They really, really are. Um, I already had these out. That one's a first edition, and that's the first reprint. Um, that one um, I actually already had in a first edition, but not in that beautiful shape. So um, what I'll probably do is get rid of my spare of that one. This one's got three pounds inside. So I'm not sure where this came from. But we'll get rid of that little three pounds. Um, yeah, the book itself, I mean, it looks virtually unread. Look at that nice, perfect spine. I'm going to give it a polish in a minute. I'll just brush it off as well. But one of the things about box sets is that, generally speaking, and it's weird, but you might find one book that's maybe been read, and then the rest are untouched. And you've got, it's a way to get absolutely immaculate copies in your collection. Um, but not always first printings or anything. It's the, it's the printing that was around. Sometimes box sets would be filled with books that they ended up printing too many of. So they were like surplus to requirements. So like almost like a bind up, but in a box set. Other times they were printed because uh, they were genuinely massive sellers. Like, I don't know, a recent, say, Game of Thrones box set, for example, which uh, I remember that was the last box set I knew that went ballistic with was it the first the first five game of thrones novels i mean absolutely fantastic that one it made a great present for people looking to try it and it was uh discounted as well so you could usually get it at a decent price now i see this one here has got a tiny it's got a tiny little mark on the top there like a something almost like a sticker but it's not not 100 percent sure what that is but it it's annoying the hell out of me. I think it was a bit of a sticker, you know. Yeah, look at that, it's gone. Yeah. 
Well, it had three pound inside, didn't it, inside the other book. So maybe that's what this one was sold for at some point back in the day. The thing about old encyclopedias, it's a bit like old travel guides, which I also love. And I'd love to collect old travel guides if I just had the room. Um, I've particularly been uh, become a bit of a fan of the, the, the AA guides from the 1930s and 40s because they're illustrated. And um, a lot of the places just don't exist anymore, like little hamlets and towns that have been uh, swallowed up by uh, bigger towns and been like, absorbed, as it were. But the stuff that you could see, particularly in those AA, like Book of the Road and stuff, is really terrific. And uh, I, uh, I love them for that reason alone. And they're cheap to collect. They're like less than a tenner each, which isn't bad at all, really. So that's that one. And we'll do the same with this. Just give it a cursory once over because it's absolutely minters, really, isn't it? It's as good as you could hope to, uh, to get. Just a shame it's a really boring old subject, but it's okay. The fiction ones are nice, and I, as I said, I do have some uh, nice fiction ones, which we'll see in due course. But this does hark back from the early days of uh, box sets, so I'm not complaining in the slightest. And it's the first time I've ever seen one, not even seen a picture of one before, so to actually find one in the flesh is brilliant, you know. And they're not bad condition at all. It's just a little bit of like surface wear. There we are. What what a pair, eh? What a pair. Let's just slide them back in. Trick is to get these in without damaging them. There we are. They slide quite nicely. Yeah, they look very, very handsome on the old shelf. Then the last thing we're going to do in this segment before we go back to more and more paperbacks are these. So these are issues of the Penguin Collectors Society. And um, these were once again amongst the, uh, the Penguin Collection that I bought recently. And um, uh, well, I'm just going to have a look through because some of them are going to have little inserts and things like this inside. Um, I'm not going to examine them all. That's going to come quite soon. Um, but these uh, do relate to the very early years of uh, penguin collecting. And uh, I'm looking forward to them. So I'm just going to go through and make sure none of them have got any um, inserts and things like that that need to come out. It doesn't look like it for these so far. But yeah, these are these 70s and 80s ones. You just don't see them. I joined the society in 1994, just before their uh, 60th birthday. But I've been collecting penguins before that. I don't know how I heard about them. Um, in all honesty, let's get some writing up. I'm not going to take any of this writing up. I think it's. I'm just going to leave these as is because they were all like the original owner. Um, but. And some of them, I can't remember when my run starts. I think it starts about number 25. And I've got the very earliest ones in, in photocopied reprint form. Um, but yeah, I, I don't remember how I first heard about the Penguin Collector Society, but I'm glad I joined. And obviously I'm still there today. And this newsletter this year is about to have the 100th issue published. So I'm planning to do a retrospective of all the Penguin Collector Society uh, issues right back from the earliest ones that I've got right up to the very latest one, number 100, which I do have a little piece in um, on the, uh, the, the Puffin edition of The Hobbit. And a bit about the original artwork now, and Pauline Baines, who did the um, who did the original artwork, which still exists. It's in a university out in the states now, so that's cool. Yeah, these are the ones. I think mine start at number twenty-five. I think. Let's see what's this. Uh, Mountain of Mirth. Comics are no laughing matter to Dennis. Dennis Gifford, he has 60,000 of them. Of course, Dennis Gifford did um, a Penguin book looking at comics, and um, he was a great comics historian. Heartbreak for 700 budding authors. Oh, Vanity Publishing, 1984. Hmm. Interesting stuff.
Yeah, there wasn't a lot to these early ones, was there? Um, not sure what that is. It looks like an order for some for some old penguins by the look of it. I'm not too worried about that. I just want the, the magazines themselves here. And this will be the uh, the books for the Penguin Collectors Society. Once again, I generally don't don't tend to keep those. I'm just into the, the magazines. Uh, the society is run as a um, as a charity, of course. Uh, this is uh, some spares. Someone called yours sincerely, Anne Francis, by the look of it, whoever she was. Must have been a member of the society at one point. This may have even come from her collection. It may have been the collection of Anne Francis, I don't know. But, um, not a name I'm familiar with. I'm certain these, these ones here, I'm pretty certain I've got these. Who's this? This is Mary Godden, the compliments. Looks like little deals that she's done to get our, our penguins. I know this is a, a familiar scroll to me anyway. It looks a bit like, well, I was gonna say it looked like Steve Hare, but it actually, Robert Sutherland. Don't know him, looks like the same. Is it quite? Dear Miss Francis, yeah, it must've been that Anne Francis, must've been the, um, must've been the original owner of these. Oh, Gutfried Wormsey. Like inquiries into things. Hmm, yeah, quite nice. A little bit of history here, but. There's lots of little letters and things. Before emails, eh? Yeah, it's just about, you know, buying the old book and, and buying. Thanks for your offer of pans 140 and 247, but I already have them. <laughs> What's this? Dear Anne, this is from. Not sure. Lovely to see you again. Night from 1988. Well, these are very personal, so I don't want to dwell on these too much. I'm not sure if Eric Gad is still around. I hope he is. I knew he was in Cornwall. I thought he was just sort of around the Penzance way. Oh, look here, a letter from Brian Kesterton. Oh, I knew Brian very well. And um, often, every time a catalogue came out, I bought off him and I'd give him a call and we'd end up chatting for about half an hour. Such a nice guy. And I met him a couple of times in the flesh. Really, really, uh, sort of great, great guy. I know there's one of his invoices. God, blimey. King Penguins, K50, popular art. £12.50. Seems expensive. The market's changed quite a bit since the 80s, you know, and uh, the internet's come along and it's changed things so, so much, you know. Um, certainly price-wise, it really, really has. Let's number 30. These are really early. Number 10, like June 1978. Definitely haven't got these early ones here. Volume 2, number 4, December 76. Wow, wow, wow. Number 8, March 77. Collector Society Index to the Society's publication. Numbers 1 to 30. Well, that'd be quite nice. Quite good to have. The Renier Collection. Historic and quote. Uh, Beth and Creams, this is a uh, penguin publication for children. This is interesting. Cool. And look at this SF paperbacks of the 90, of the 60s. Andrew Dolby. 250 copies printed at the author's expense. Wow, wow, we. So this is interesting. Um, preface. This catalogue is primarily a list of books available for sale. Okay. Okay, so we've got about another 100 paperbacks to get through, there or thereabouts, and um, that will be it for today. So we're going to go through these, give them a clean as we go along as well. And um, we have got a rather nice, funky run of the New Worlds. Now, these are the New Worlds that were in paperback format. So if we uh, compare it to this Ed McBain, they're A format size, a tiny bit under that. And um, 
Some of them have got glossy covers. Some of them, like these earlier ones, have got buff covers, so they can't be polished. Um, all of them have got a host of fantastic stuff inside. And uh, I haven't quite got all the paperback ones off Bob, but I got the majority of them. And they're published by a compact, which is uh, a publisher I'm trying to get all their science fiction output. So the paper is still quite pulpy on these early ones. A bit more like a digest than anything else. And um, these came from Dorset Bob. He's got, he had multiple copies of all of these because Bob's got a full run of New Worlds and uh, every single one. But I tried to uh, pull out a few of each and pick the best one. So I have got a little pile of books that um, some can be, uh, some can be polished and some can. But what we'll do, we'll, we'll pull out a little wedge, like a pile, get them brushed and then I'll sort them into uh, polishing and not polishing ones. Um, yeah, lots of good stuff in here. Edited by Michael Moorcock. Life bar. So this has got a slightly glossier cover here, EC Tub. And this is one of those ones, just some of the collection, because I had some um, science fantasy off the same dealer. Um, some of the collection have got uh, nicotine staining on the spine, but we know we can lighten that up, so I'm not overly worried about that. But these have got some good stuff in here. A lot of them have got uh, Keith Roberts jackets. I'm not sure if that's a Keith Roberts. It looks like his style, but it's not signed. So not sure on that one. But he did do some jackets for New Worlds. As well as being an author, of course. 154. In a lot of cases, I wouldn't say these were file copies, but they were from collections that were very, very well looked after, shall we say, which is what we want. So, um, as I said, I was, I'm was i not expecting too much work on these because I was able to go through and pull what I believe to be the best looking copies that Bob had available at the time. So they won't all be perfect uh, by any means, but um, they were the best ones that Bob had. So uh, I can't really complain. So I'm not going to See, something like that. It's got a little, you know, it's got the pen on there and that, but I don't really care. It's a nice early Harry Harrison. I'll be okay with that, you know. J.D. Ballard's in some of these. Here we are, like the assassination of JFK. Just a short essay more than anything. This one's actually got a Ballard cover. So there's some New Worlds, which uh, like I think New Worlds had the second ever write, uh, published writing by um, uh, Terry Pratchett. I think he's in a galaxy as well, but that one's not here. But this one isn't bad. It's got a little, little fag burn on the front, but it's a nice early ballard. Yeah, gets the cover there. Pencil mark inside. Let's get my rubber. Oh, that's six pounds in. I certainly didn't pay that for it. Um, I think Bob let me have these all between like two and three pounds each. There or thereabouts, you know, about three pound each. I said he's got lots of multiple copies of these. So uh, if you are after any, he hasn't got them all, but he's got most. So you would be able to pick some up if you want to. It's really nice and tight. Obviously, the way to get them is as mint as possible. See, there's a Keith Roberts. That's quite. Um, quite distinctive in it, his style there for the garbage world. That has also got a little price inside, four pound or something. Very light, thankfully. Let's make sure I catch these. Yeah, that didn't have anything inside. It's another ballad again, The Day of Forever. Very, very faint price. I couldn't really see it. About six pounds on that one. He had SF Reprise, a reprise. This is a reprint title, but I don't mind because uh, 
it is quite quite funky it's a pretty nice copy i can't imagine these turn up in great condition you know i haven't quite got all six i think there is but i've got a fair few of them. and this is nice got the the insert there as well you know can't complain at that you really really can't you know another harrison here bill the galactic hero i'm guessing that's the first uh first appearance of it yeah also death world i read death world on uh, my holiday recently oh, i really enjoyed it i couldn't put it down i literally couldn't put it down and i know that there's death world two and three to come so uh, i'm really looking forward to those but i almost want to save them you know because i enjoyed the first one so much but they're quite quite quick reads you know so What men do. Cool. I think what we'll do then is gonna give these the brush. Try and put them into a slightly shorter size pile. So we'll do these three. As expected, not a lot coming off these dust wise because they're from they've been stored very well by a dealer. Some of them, as you can see, were bagged, so I wasn't expecting them to be in too bad shape at all. But I like to give all my books when they come into my collection a bit of a brush. And then all I need to do occasionally is uh, is hoover my shelves to try and keep keep the dust off them as best I can. But I pull my books out so often for various things that they don't get too dusty. In all honesty, they do get moved around a bit. just some of them can be polished some of them can so these have got buff covers so I'm going to put them in a separate pile over there but the ones that can have a little bit of a, a wipe over are going to go in a pile over here so I think all of these are in that in that group yeah don't they look fantastic these they really really do they're great so they're all going to be able to be polished in a minute, but this other pile, no. <sighs> okay, so we've got more New Worlds and a Compact SF. This is a particularly nice one, that. I mean, it's Michael Walcock, but hold the man. It's not one I've ever read, but it's got a Keith Roberts jacket on it. This is pretty tasty, and it's one I shall be giving a try, that's for certain. Yeah, it's like the main thing in that one. It's... Uh, 55 pages so give that a go i'm sure that all this Moorcock stuff has been collected at some point another one with a keith roberts jacket stormbird storm dreamer ballard and i wonder if they tried to make these you know paperback format to appeal to the sf paperback market rather than the traditional digest crowd i wonder you know but New Worlds had so many different formats over the years, and just prior, just after this sort of paperback format, they go back to magazine again, you know. So to get the whole run, which would be fantastic, I've got to say, and I'd love, I, I've been half tempted to try and get them, but um, some of the early ones are tough in nice shape, and I, I just don't like the quality of those early digests. They just, um, they, they. Mm, 
just make my skin crawl. <laughs> There's just something about them, you know. It's <sighs> a really nice one, isn't it? Yeah, Steve is the man. He's got all the stories about Cyril Bonfiglioli. Um, yeah, Steve knows this period of SF, the Outlaw books there, Steve the Outlaw books there, so, so well. And you can learn a lot from watching his videos. I know he's got some stuff on Keith Roberts coming up. This is a great one here. And another one with the, the slightly earlier ones with the uh, the buff, um, buff covers. The same as this one here, in fact. This has got, actually, it's got a little bit of cover luster, so that'll probably be okay. To give a little polish to and uh, a later one here 151 cool so they're all groovy um actually a non new one so panther sf i think this was from uh morris's one pound shop again so it's got a few spine creases and stuff but bought solely for the reading <sighs> not for anything else really it'll go in the collection because it's not too bad at all but it has got a few spine creases so you wouldn't call it a collector's copy but you would call it an eminently readable one that's what i'm going to call that here's an odd pound one it's post isbn it says isbn period and once again i couldn't really remember if i've got it he's a little low grade on reflection you know but oh um i might have reconsidered um picking this one up on reflection but it has got a w francis phillips the cover looks a bit like the matrix in actual fact the little baby from the matrix i don't know but i give it um i'll give it a, a clean up and i think it'll be absolutely fine to read um is it, is it all by uh douglas hill or did he just edit it yeah it is different authors look so it is a, it is an sf anthology that one uh few more new worlds here new worlds that readership survey that's cool isn't it very nice i love that sort of stuff in in old pulps and mags it's all good amen and out okay Keith Roberts did loads of this artwork. I didn't realise he was quite as a prolific artist as he evidently seems to be, you know, or seems to have been. That's cool. Look at that one there. What a great jacket that is, isn't it? Thomas Dish. Echo round his bones. A nice copy of that. Yeah, very, very nice indeed. whack the camera there but there we are <laughs> yeah that's super cool um i think we'll just um give these a brush again Sort out the ones that can be polished. 
that one cannot. It's just just the other early one. Slip them back in the pile. More SF reprise. Definitely tough to find these in nice shape. These are real sort of collector, collector's ones in my in my book. It's another earlier one there. And that cover. I said I did get a really nice run of these. And that one actually has a little Tiny bop of the spine there. So let's just grab that. Get some Pritt stick on the bottom of that one. Excess. Hopefully, stop that one getting any worse. Number one hundred and fifty. New World's one fifty. Look at that. One hundred and fifty British contributors. Dear, oh dear! Look at the state of them. That is brilliant, isn't it? That's awesome. Very, very nice. Uh, this is one I picked up at uh, Morris's in his main warehouse. It's uh, when I'd not seen this jacket on, but it appears to be the first printing um, published by Tor in the States where Atlantis died. Got a couple of little creases on it, but I don't mind with this. Yeah, first print in September 83. It's got a spine crease there, but still, I think that's quite, probably quite scarce, that one. Uh, this one, I was really, really pleased to get. It's one of his very earliest books, indeed. A Bantam. Great, great jacket. The Bantam SF, including their Star Trek books from this period, is, is actually, I think, underrated. Really, really underrated. So, yeah, Bantam edition, July 68. There we are. Planet of the Damned. Not a one, but not too bad. Um, I'm going to be pleased to have it, to be honest. Yeah, January 62. So all he'd had published prior to this was Death World. So quite an early one again, um, but pleased, pleased to get it. Another SF reprise, number two here. Cover warping, but it's still, still not a bad copy. Not a bad copy that one. So so scarce. This is good as well. Best in new worlds. Please with this. But that's a good, good read as well, and not a bad copy. All things considered, you know. That's what they considered the best of new worlds at that point. And there's definitely some excellent stuff in there. Now back to some more penguin stuff. So we got um, Tibetan Marches, another one of the game's covers. As I said, I picked up a nice haul of these. Oh, look at that. Would you believe it? <laughs> Actually had another penguin bookmark in. Nice 
99p in there. Yeah, nice uh, Games Illustrated cover there. I see this has also got a little mark on the inside. Not a mark, but a owner's signature in pencil. So they will be forgiven for writing it in pencil. Not forgiven for putting it in such an awkward place. I am harsh, aren't I? I mean, well, that took it slightly more work than I was thinking, but it's a nice overall copy of, you know, these scarce books. And, um, well, this was a little bonus. I have actually got this one. I've had, a, had it a couple of times, uh, but even so, that was a, just a bonus. They do turn up. That, that's the thing. They, these sorts of things do turn up in, uh, in old books. It's brilliant. I just wish I'd, I've only got one original pan horror one. And there's three, and I'd like to get the other two, but they don't seem to turn out very often. Um, I think this is probably the first time I've seen this one. It's um, a reprint for, of Penguin number three, uh, 379, Death of a Ghost. So a scarce book in its own right. Uh, but this reprint is uh, particularly scarce with the game's cover. Um, maybe it just didn't sell so well at the time because it was a reprint. Whereas a lot of the books were the first time they were in Penguin form. So a lot of the game, game's covers are new books in Penguin, whereas this was evidently a book that had been out for 10 years. So it may not have had such appeal, which maybe this is why it's the first time I ever actually set eyes on it, you know, possibly. This is a great book, the great, the original Great Escape, Paul Brickle, and I love the cover, it's Abraham Games again. Really, really great design. Um, I have got it, but I can't remember quite how good my copy is and this was a nice copy again that i just didn't want to leave behind really so uh, i picked him up yeah i'm hoping the time i get to my wants lists um and i update them um, i'm going to be virtually there on the games covers this is one i don't think i've got fifth planet another penguin science fiction and um, I can't be that far off having virtually all of them now. Certainly pre-1970. There's definitely stuff after that I haven't got. But pre-1970, I can't be that far off having it all. Um, so there is a particularly good penguin uh, website to Penguin Science Fiction, which I, I recommend. I can't think of the exact address off the top of my head, but it's, it's just superb. And they've got every book. Um, with all the different jackets on, so that Day of the Triffids, you can go there and see about 30 different covers on it, you know. Um, this is all right, although I realise now that it's been laminated, which isn't the end of the world, because it has done quite a good job of protecting the book. But, yeah, unfortunately, you will get the odd staining going on. But I think it was from um, Morris's One Pound shop, so not too bad, it's an original. Another one here, Final Curtain. I couldn't remember if I needed this one or not. Not in the greatest of shape, but it is what it is. Yeah, 1958. This is another one which, you know, it's borderline. I, I don't know which one's better than mine. So I'm going to pull, pull them all out when I get to file these away fairly soon. And um, hopefully this weekend. And I'll uh, do a bit of a comparison so I'll be able to sort out my uh, my spares because I've got a couple of friends who are collecting the games covers and I promised them to them first so uh, and this is another a great one the prevalence of which is really like interesting jacket on it you know, Abraham games again so uh, yeah pleased to get this 35p October 1999 
Okay. Um, I think before we go any further, we better have another little little brush. Is in slightly varying conditions, but some will be better than others. Most of these can be done. There's a couple that couldn't. There we are. What a messy old job this is. <laughs> this one, on reflection, I'm, I'm certain I've got it. It's uh, one of those uh, Belmont ones, and I only had these out the other day. I'm absolutely certain I've got this one, but it's a pretty nice copy. Uh, a little bit tanned, but it's not bad. Um, I'll double check it against what I've got, but I'll, some, I'll have a little spare of that. It's a really uh, um, nice copy of that. I'm sure mine isn't that good, so uh, that was all right. Another door I was after. That was cool. Glad to start to be starting to fill in some of my door gaps now. Uh, both Bob and um, Morris have got loads of them, so it's really just a case of um, getting off my ass and, and uh, sorting them out. Another little anthology from George. This is from Morris's. Uh, one pound, so it's Panther SF. They sure did some good SF, old Panther, didn't they? Another one. This is a this is a double. I have got it, um, but it's a Penguin Science Fiction. I don't like to leave that behind when I come across it, which isn't that often. Um, and I think it's all uh, collected in its own right now, Penguin SF. So uh, I like to pick that up when it comes my way, <sighs> if I can. here tandem a British publisher and some of these uh, probably won't make it into my collection they'll just be I'll read them and then uh, and just trade them on nice and cheap as you know I do this is a uh, Paul Anderson don't really want to leave this behind um, it's a nice ace
little bit tanned, but it's all right. This one, once again, on reflection, I think I've probably got it. So I think I've doubled up on this, but um, yeah, it doesn't matter. Actually, I see it's quite, uh, this is quite badly water soaked in actual fact. So there we are picking this up in the, in the heat of the moment and the rush of the uh, the shop. That one's actually not in the greatest of shape, but I'm pretty sure I've got him anyway. So uh, it was only a pound. So I'll knock it on to someone else for a pound if they want to read it. A uh, bit more Panther SF here. Best of fantasy and science fiction, 15th series, wow. Yeah, wow, wow, wow. More Penguin science fiction, Lambada. Pretty sure I've got this one. But once again, I wasn't gonna leave it behind. to the uh, Penguin Handbooks. Of which I'm looking forward to updating my uh, collection of those in a massive way, you know. I think the numbering just about, I'm trying to think pre-1970 what the numbering goes up to, it's probably about 140, something like that. I must be over halfway now, I'd be amazed if I wasn't, you know. Uh, here's a fairly early American penguin. Um, on reflection, a bit of a beaten up old copy in all honesty, but um, you don't see them very often in the UK, so I didn't want to leave it behind. And I knew it was one that I didn't have. Um, the later ones in traditional A format are much more common, but these ones here in the uh, smaller like pocket books format, like Corgis, not so common anymore. And I think out of all of them, they would be the ones I'd most like to get my hands on. Um, this was nice. This is a penguin catalog. Um, I have got this one, but I think mine's got a over there. It's got like a bookshop stamp on. So this will be an upgrade to the one that I've got. Absolutely beautiful, these catalogs. Really, really nice. I love them. But I think the one that I've got is slightly more worn. You know, it's been used, as it were. There we are. So we'll have a spare of that one. And a Penguin's Progress, I still need an odd one, I think, to complete the set. Um, but I don't like to leave them behind. It's a bit like Pan Records, which you don't often come across, so. When you see these things, they're getting scarcer, not more common. So always worth picking them up. Uh, good food on a budget. Look at that, one P. Didn't see many of them around. This is a pretty big thick one uh, it looks like it's big turned over page there these penguin handbooks which are actually cookbooks are scarce um, I just put it out there particularly the early um, cookbooks the first one is actually published during the war it's a penguin special it's called the wartime good housekeeping cookery book and it's like penguin special number 101 or something like that mega rare mega rare that's a 50 quid book uh, in my opinion in nice condition probably the most expensive um, penguin special that there is just letting you know if you ever see it which is rare it's the one that in actual fact there is one which i think is scarcer because it's virtually a pamphlet and it's um it was the last one i needed um, and it was it's called the uh Economic Development of India or something like that. That's mega rare. I think it's contestant for the, the thinnest vintage penguin as well. Big old thick book. This is going to eat up the old bookcases, isn't it? Travel in Europe, Penguin Habit 116. Wow, we. Wow, we is what I say. Tree and fruit growing. These are reissues of the old ones that came out in the 40s by the same author. This one's got a Bernardo sticker in. Let's see if I can tease that a little. Dr. Bernardo's charity shop. Oh, it's not coming off very well. 
Why would you put a sticker inside a book of crime? Cool, blimey. It's coming, but it's not coming very well, I'm afraid to say. I think it's going to cause a bit of rippage. Yeah, it's going to leave a bit of a mark, I'm afraid to say. price you pay sometimes for buying a book in a charity shop you sometimes have to put up with the odd mark inside but to be honest it's not that bad I think it's better without the sticker in my humble opinion there we are we got it Point. Still not quite got this last bit off. There we are. God. What a mess. How dare it. There we are, all for uh, tree and fruit brownie. But that's better. Better without the, uh, the sticker. Oh, another odd door. Great jacket, that one, isn't it? Yeah, once again, a little bit the worse for wear, but one that I needed. And I didn't mind forking out a pattern for that, but he is a bit worn, to be honest. I need to take more care in, uh, in Morris's one pound shop. But there is good stuff in there. It's not all low grade. But a lot of my doors are not perfect condition by any means, so I don't mind taking that one. But he is a little bit borderline. Last few, sadly. What's that there? What's that foreign body? A bit of scrap paper someone's used as a bookmark. How dare they? Oh, another one here. Oh, and there's a letter. Oh, ho, 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 ho. could be a little bit of scandal in there. Let's just check the rest of the book. Oh, let's have a look. Ah, it's a recipe. Would you believe it? Inside a cookery book. I was hoping for something really good, you know, but it's not. It's a recipe. Look at that. To make a gâteau ganache. Ah, I was hoping for some sort of scandalous letter. That would have been super cool, wouldn't it? How to cook and eat in Chinese. Wow. Oh, I love a Chinese, you know. I love a Chinese. Absolutely gorgeous food. Oh, 
herbs and spices. Oh, another note of some description. What will we find in it? Got a sticker on the cover which it looks as if someone's tried to take off already. some mode off so it's been as you can see quite a momentous couple of months and this is best part of two months that you see in here that's come through my hands I just haven't had a chance to do a pickups video um, in the last few weeks it's just had too much going on um, there's an awful lot going on in october i've got some really really exciting stuff to share with you but i can't reveal it yet unfortunately but i will be soon and i will mention here now if anyone's going to the comic con at the end of october i will be there it's at the excel in london and i will be there and i will be filming and um if you are there any spot we do come up and say hello what's this with the compliments of golden and curry limited high street tunbridge wells and what's this here ah <laughs> recipes again what are they like hey eh? right okay let's um give this last little batch a brush and then we can get them polished What a mess we're making. Right, let's get this last lot sorted and polished. Right, let the spraying commence. 
and uh, I've sorted out all the books that are going to need a bit of a polish today. Some will of course come up better than others. But I like to put them all through the, uh, the process so that they're looking as good as possible before they end up in the uh, in my main collection. It's a chance to give them one last sort of going over really before they do get filed away or put into my to be red pile like a lot of these anthologies will be. I've got a sort of a separate place for some of my anthologies now um, so I can get to them quite easily when the mood takes me. got a bit of an awful sticker on the back so I'm going to give it a bit of targeted squirt there and we'll put that one to one side and let it soak in a bit. This one was a bit of a rough copy. See how this one's getting on. Pretty good, look at that. Excellent. Let that dry out a bit now. Yeah, did a good job on that. That went out really nicely. on blue, eh? So, well, what an epic episode, really, you know? I um, hope you've enjoyed seeing all these new pickups that I've got. I mean, absolutely phenomenal. It's going to take me a good hour or two to get them all 
catalogued onto the computer, probably longer than that even. And uh, even more so to uh, go to the collection and uh, compare copies against what I've already got, which is always a fun thing to do. I absolutely love upgrading um, and then, you know, moving on my spares to the uh, to other collectors. It's just great. I love it. Always good fun. Now, the good news is I'm going back to Morris's in just a few weeks time. Um, in fact, by the time you see this video, it'll be like literally a few days I'm going back up. And this time I'll be with my friend Steve, the Outlaw Bookseller, who had COVID, sadly, when I last went up. So I had to fly, fly solo. Uh, but he's thankfully A1 again. And uh, he needs a little treat. Since he's had such a rough time of it. Bloody COVID. So look out for that, that trip, plus a, yet another pickups video in you know, about a month's time. Now, as I said, I am going to be heading to Comic-Con, the London Comic Convention at the XL. It's at the end of the month. I'm going to be there on the Saturday with my son, Sam, and we're going to be filming the event. And I am very much looking forward to it. It's going to be huge. I'll hopefully find, I'm going to be looking for some good stuff to, to buy. And uh, you never know at such a huge show what you're going to come across. So uh, keep an eye on the channel because that is going to take up most of the week. It's going to be leading up to the event. And I'm going to try and do some little YouTube shorts from the event, which I think will be quite cool as well. And... Uh, send me messages on the day and we might be able to like act on what people are seeing it should be really really cool so uh, yeah look out for that at the end of this month um, it is going to be pretty cool do is the best that we can and we do do a good job so because as soon as I've done this sadly I've got to do some gardening because it may be the last chance I get to do a proper trim of the garden before the year is out so uh there's lots of weeds grown up by the uh, by the studio here in the back garden, and it was getting so bad I was, you know, literally swinging through the vines just to get to the studio. So um, <laughs> that is not good. So while the weather has been quite dry the last few days, and um, it's about midday as we film this, so it's as, as warm as it's going to get and dry as it's going to get. Um, I need to spend a few hours in the garden. So wish me luck because. Uh, It's a big old task, but it's okay, and it's also good exercise. Maybe I could borrow some of my penguin handbooks. I'm only kidding. glue has like warped these books a little bit over the years.
making a huge difference on some of these, I tell you. Even though they're nice, like mint copies, they've got a lot of, well, six or seven decades of just shelfware. Now look at this, this is a, an example of one which is really uh, nicotined. So we're gonna find a nice fresh bit of cloth. And look, look at this, look. So that's been on someone's shelf, obviously a heavy smoker. And um, it's stained the whiteness of this book. So this will help it a little bit. But when you have a look at what comes off, look at that, the cigarette nicotine that. Incredible, isn't it? Absolutely incredible. That's about as good as we're going to get that. Still a nice copy. You know what I mean. Now the other hot news, and I'm sure you're aware of this now, but the uh, the date has been announced for the next London paperback show. It's at the same location at the uh, the Bloomsbury Holiday Inn in Coram Road or Coram Street, I think it is. Um, you can f find it online. It's the uh, Bloomsbury Book Fair, it's organised by Etc Books. And it's on March the 24th. I will definitely be there. Steve, the Outlook Bookstore, will definitely be there. And uh, we certainly hope to see as many of you as possible. So put a little date in your diary now. March the 24th, 2024. No excuses, please. It is one week after the LA paperback show, which laughably I thought, you know, I oh, might have a... Might see if I could get out there, but um, it ain't going to happen one week before the British show. It's just, uh, I can't fit that in. I am still working after all, so, you know, it ain't going to happen. But there you go. So, uh, yeah, certainly hope to see as many of you there as I possibly can. There we are, so that's a really nice, good wedge. Oh dear. <sighs> Let us carry on. A few to get through. Find a clean bit of cloth. This is going to need a uh, zapping after today's session. That's for certain.
Mm, getting through these okay. last little wedge now to give a polish to it's been a real long video and uh, if you stayed with it all the way through well done to you if you've watched it in parts that's probably how most people will watch this I would imagine as a multi-part video masterpiece <laughs> I don't know about masterpiece but certainly some good stuff to be uh, to be seen today that is for certain
little stain at the bottom of this one. So one thing that is on the horizon, and I did mean to at least mention it, is um, the channel is very fast approaching 25,000 subscribers, which is an absolutely astounding number. Um, I've got to say I'm absolutely bowled over by that. Um, and I'm planning to do like a Q&A, so like an Ask Me Anything to camera video, uh, where people send in any questions they might want to ask me about collecting or my life or whatever really you know so if this is something you've got a burning question uh you can start sending um questions in you can just put them in the comments of the videos and uh i'll do my best to uh to, to answer them in that up and coming video i'm going to start compiling them now since uh You never know, that might very, very soon creep up on me with the added exposure of the Comic-Con uh, video, I would imagine, you know, so, um, you know, that'll catering to a bit of a different market to what I usually do um, in, a, in a funny sort of way, um, but of interest to hopefully everyone, even on, on these book cleaning videos. And uh, it will probably result in quite a few people uh, heading my way. And the channel might quickly go over 25,000 without blinking. And I don't want to miss the anniversary without at least celebrating it with a video. So I'm going to start entertaining questions as soon as you're ready, really. And uh, you can start sending them through. So uh, keep a little eye out for that. This is one of the best SF hauls I've had in about a year. Absolutely phenomenal amounts of stuff. And uh, I do class myself as very lucky to be able to get so many in just a couple of hits, you know? Absolutely brilliant. My old cloth is certainly the worst for wear. I'm going to put this one through the wash this afternoon. <clears throat> We've got just enough clean, clean cloth left to uh, do the rest of these. <laughs> Just about.
another really good thing that's been happening lately is I've been going swimming um, on a twice weekly basis now and uh, I've been slowly building up my fitness back to where I used to be with my swimming and I'm now up to swimming a kilometre a visit which is pretty cool I've been really really feeling the benefits of that so I'm sure you'll all be very happy for me <laughs> but I do a job generally that's a lot of sitting down which is not great during the day and we must all keep as active as possible so I'm really uh, pleased that I'm back in the zone with my swimming so uh, I've only been doing it for six weeks but it's been uh, really really enjoyable and uh, hopefully I'll start to see I mean I'm already feeling the difference to be honest but hopefully I'll be able to see the difference um, in another sort of six weeks or so watching this lot today it's certainly been an epic that is for certain if you have of course the usual hit the thumbs up please hit the subscribe button if you've not already you know the routine let's see just how quickly we can get to 25,000 <laughs> Don't forget all the new books that have just been published. If you're looking to add something to a Christmas shopping list or gifts for people to get to you, I recommend all the books that I've shown today. Um, the new books, that is. And I said I've got a, a sales video coming up in a couple of weeks' time if I can squeeze it in before Comic-Con. If not, it'll be just afterwards. Um, but some mint pan stock, some mint badger stock, your know, file stock from Dorset Bob. Stuff that will be very, very tempting, I'm sure. My Patreon and channel members will get first dig. So if you're not already supporting us on Patreon or uh, on YouTube channel memberships, it might be an incentive to do it because you get to see all the books that I've got for sale before the videos go out to... Uh, onto the channel for you know, the general public as it were so all my um, supporters get first bite of the apple which is only fair as a thank you for supporting me and of course they get to see videos like this a week early and thank you to all my supporters for uh, of which there are many for helping me through about got a little bit of clean cloth left I think this is probably the most expansive cleaning session I think I've ever done <laughs> I'm sure you didn't mind Thanks for watching today. Or over many days, I suspect, because it's such a long video. And uh, I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. 
with another slice of vintage paperback action. Bye.